This is Doug Joseph with Design 8 Studio, and I'm working on my Lowrider 3, and I just wanted to mention a couple of things uh, in my initial experience with putting together this um, strut support, the X gantry uh, structure, and that is that when you go to cut your uh, EMT conduit, um, if you measure from the factory edge and then cut, then you've got one as a factory edge and a razor sharp cut made with your tube cutter. And then on a 10 foot section, if you measure from there and cut, then you're going to wind up with another section that has two razor sharp uh, ends that were cut with a tube cutter. Why that matters is that, at least in my case, the uh, rather smooth and not as razor sharp factory edge um, is easier to introduce into this clamping area and get it pushed through. The razor sharp part tends to kind of bite into the plastic and doesn't move through quite as easily. Um, I didn't realize that going into it and so the first one I put on was uh, the one that had one sharp edge and one factory edge. I put the first half sliding in from one side, just happened to choose the side with the razor sharp edge and experienced that difficulty first. And only when I went to slide the others in from this side did I realize that coming from the factory edge was easier. And by that point, I was faced with putting this one in which had razor sharp edges on both ends, both having been made from the tube cutter. So probably if I had it to do over again, I might have measured from the factory edge in and cut, measured for the factory edge in and cut, and had at least one factory edge on both of the tubes. Um, the other thing is that having, uh, having cut this strut in advance uh, made it much easier to lay it down and use it as a guide, which that's mentioned in the instructions, but hopefully when I show you here, it'll make more sense. So when you lay it right against the edge of the, the EMT conduit, the, the screw notches let you know where to position these so you don't have to measure or anything. Also, I didn't realize when I first saw it, I didn't realize that more than one of these was needed. Um, should have read closer. So I only cut one of these with my Lowrider 2 before I dismantled it. So I've got one of them and I'll get the machine put together and then I'll use the Lowrider 3 to cut the remaining uh, struts that are needed. And uh, finally, uh, these things are surprisingly able to kind of keep standing upright while moving the second one through, but I've found that rotating it helps with that. So I'll go ahead and finish inserting it through this one and this one. And again, it's a little more difficult to insert because I've got that razor sharp end it tends to kind of bite in. And what I've noticed is that if I use my thumb pressed against one side of the clamp, my finger pressed against the other side, and I actually kind of put pressure to open the clamp up as I'm bringing the pipe into it, the conduit into it, it helps it to go in. All right, one more to go. Uh, one last thing I do want to mention is that I wanted mine an inch wider than normal so that instead of being able to address a four by eight sheet, I would be able to address a 49 inch by 97 inch um, MDF sheet so that if I use that bigger MDF sheet as a spoil board, I can get my, my spoil board surfacing bit to access every bit of that spoil board. So this one is an inch longer than normal. And what I did was simply, I took the format for this and stretched it um, laterally by one inch. And that literally only made, um, I think like, 0.1 of a millimeter difference on these screw hole widths. So very minimal 
So I did not go through a lot of headache in redesigning. Just took the existing sign and stretched it by that one inch. All right, and just like that, this phase is complete and on to the next phase.